Welcome to Kainat. Welcome, Welcome to Pinoy Crossover, guys. The basketball show for the Filipino community. I'm your host tonight, Marky Mark. Over here on my right, Mr. Jr. How are you feeling tonight? I'm doing all right. It's getting a little colder, but um, I'm enjoying this uh, weather and enjoying those sports that's happening, especially in basketball. Exactly. I mean, basketball season now because it's cold. We're gonna stay home, watch some games. <laughs> yeah. And I got my sweater game on tonight because it's cold. It is very cold tonight. Mm -hmm. And our special guest for tonight. Very happy to have you. Introduce yourself here, the legend. Oh, come, come on. <laughs> uh, Jeff Landicho, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've seen you guys work for a little bit now, and it's it's really nice to, to come visit the set and visit you guys, and it's really cool. Really very, cool to be here. Very, very happy to have you on, man. No, mm -hmm. it's a, my pleasure, man. It's, I mean, uh, I reached out to you directly, and yeah. it was really glad that, you know, you came back to us because, you know, the work that you do is amazing. But before we, you know, before we get into that part, we kind of want to get to know a bit about you. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, where you're basking, you know, everything about you with the girls to basketball how did you get into it i, I got jr to kind, of, to kind of start with the questions yeah, i mean we, everyone knows if you're around the philippine community if you know jeff you know he's a producer he does a lot of stuff with the Toronto Islanders. but we want to want to know what your basketball roots because you do have deep basketball roots uh what was it like getting into basketball as a, like a youth or as growing up <laughs> for just just like all like most of the guys that we know or who grew up with uh, in Toronto and as a Filipino youth in, in, in Toronto, like we all love basketball. And it comes from my parents, it comes from my dad mainly. My dad was a massive basketball fan and, and I grew up uh, watching the Lakers and the Celtics, the, the Bulls Browns, yeah. and, 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 and Jordan and all of that, whole, the entire 80s and 90s era, uh, just as a huge basketball fan. Uh, obviously played when I was a kid and, and uh, we were talking off camera, we, we, I was part of that first group of, of, of kids that were, when, when, when Phil Can started their youth division mm -hmm. uh, back in the late 80s, uh, I was part of that group that, that started playing in, the, in organized basketball with the Filipino leagues. And now, when you look now, there's just leagues and organizations mm -hmm. and groups all over the city, yeah. mm -hmm. all across the GTA. And, in southern Ontario, so um, kind of reminiscing and, and thinking about where, where it all started with four teams uh, at West Hill Collegiate in Scarborough, and, and within a couple of years, the divisions grew to like the midget and the bantams and the juvenile divisions, and, and me be, being part of that first wave of, of bas basketball kids uh, outside of the, our, our parents that immigrated here in the, in the 70s, being part of that first generation of basketball uh, basketball players is, is, is something I, I, I find um, a, a lot of pride in and knowing that, um, you know, basketball and, and this city and, and our community, uh, it's, 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 it's ingrained in, in everything that, that I'm about. So Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, to me, I immigrated in Canada a little bit later on, too, but... I've never really, you know, didn't really know the roots of basketball here. I just know when I came here, it was already big. Maybe you can tell us, you know, maybe on our audience, to a lot of our audience, our, our kids as well, can you give us a little bit of a history about, like, you know, how the Filipino community and the basketball community here in Canada kind of started? Because, like you mentioned, you were one of the first people in the first wave of basketball here. Yeah, the, the, well, the first group was in the, in the mid-70s, late 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, like, the Phil, Philac was first, I believe, mm -hmm. and... Um, and then, there, and then Phil Can came around, and then Palaro came around, and um, they they always had their, their their open and senior divisions, and those were all our parents playing. <laughs> My dad played Wally Landicho, uh, your favorite referee. Um, <laughs> he was playing until he was about 55. We were just talking wow. about it, and he was yeah. he he showed me he showed me like box scores of. Back in the day when he used to play in club teams at home of him scoring like 70, 80, 90 points oh and him trying to like leave the gym without getting in a scrap because everyone wanted to, to, to fight him for, for showing them up and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. he was playing till he was like 55. Um, but there was always the open in the senior divisions and there mm -hmm. was never the youth divisions. Mm -hmm. And in, when I was in grade seven, they started uh, a youth division in Philcan. There was a... a, a, a a youth division in Palaro a couple of years prior, but it kind of Palaro kind of kind of faded away a little bit. So mm -hmm. Phil Can um, started the youth youth division in, in I, I believe it was eighty nine or ninety four teams: uh, the Green Archers, the Blue Eagles, the Red Barons, and the White Knights. The the the, the names are are um, 
are based off of the uh, the colleges in, back home, yeah. um, and guys like Mike Samira and uh, a whole heap of guys that I grew up playing with um, were part of that first group of, of, of youth basketball, and, and we were part of the first group that when NABA went into the youth division, we were part of that first group that that um, competed against all the cities mm -hmm. in NABA with Seapog and and Detroit and um, Philly and New Jersey and all those 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 groups. We were Washington D.C. Uh, we were part of that group that first had that taste of the youth division mm -hmm. um, because they, they 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 already had the, the open division and senior division established. But um, it was cool to be part of that first group of of, of youth in, yeah. in, in in those in those those tournaments in those uh, those leagues. Mm -hmm. Was there a was there a greatest memory about playing back then? Or did you have a favorable memory that you know? Uh, the the Naba tournaments were always big. Mike Samir always uh, jokes about how um, how I was the best forward in Windsor and <laughs> in uh, back then because we uh, we had played that that tournament. It was about eight teams. And with double elimination, we had lost the first game, mm -hmm. and we had to play in the second day, I believe it was like five or six games straight, like back to back to back, back to, to back, back to back. back. And guys were going down like flies cramps. with cramps <laughs> yeah. and injuries, and, and we Damn. were in the semifinals against Seapug. And I'll never forget, it's crazy, it's like 25 years later. Uh, we were in the semifinals against Seapug, we were down one, I steal the ball, I go up, hit a layup, and put us up. And then they, they, the the possession after the, their, their, they had their best player. He was nasty, um, counting it down. He wanted to take the last shot, and he goes up. And I heard the buzzer go off while he was attempting his shot. So in my mind, I knew the game was done. Mm -hmm. So I gave him a shot because he went to the basket and yeah. I just gave him a, like, I made him feel yeah. like him going to the basket. I knew the game was over. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, the game was over. We won by one and all the Seapug kids were crying and yeah. and we had like <laughs> six players left because all our guys were in, on, on, the, on the bench yeah. and injured. Yeah. <laughs> injured and, 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 and then we went to the finals against Detroit and all the parents were giving us balot and, and stuff, trying to, and bananas trying to get us, uh, get us right. <laughs> and we got spanked. We got spanked by Detroit in the in the, in the finals. But um, uh, those good times as a kid, you know, the, you can't beat those times. And mm -hmm. I can't even remember stuff I did two weeks ago. But mm -hmm. those games mm -hmm. from yeah. like 25 years ago, I remember like each possession. So it's mm -hmm. it's 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 um it's really cool to, to those, think back about those, those are good memories those, those yeah. are good yeah. memories to have exactly. and keep as you're young and you get older so mm -hmm. at least you could retell it as well yeah what have you seen i guess um from back in the day when you when it started with the youth division for basketball um have you seen any growth or or what have you seen from back in the day when they had it to what they have now in terms of programs and development and and leagues and tournaments yeah it's, it's night and day now yeah. um there's just access Access is the, is the biggest thing for kids now. They, mm -hmm. they, can, they can go in any, they can join any group, any league. doesn't even need to be Filipino leagues. There's mm -hmm. just coach, proper coaching and proper leagues and, and, and teams um, that, that um, it's just all over, all over the city. So if, mm -hmm. if, if you love the game, you're going to have an mm -hmm. opportunity to, um, to play some play some some good basketball, be be um, be under some good coaching and, and and teams and organizations that really take it seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, it was a little harder to to. There's only a couple leagues and a couple teams, and you you're a part of these teams, and it's almost hard to, to get on some of these teams because, yeah. and especially now with the the internet and and social media and all that, there's so much more opportunity to just know what's going going on. Mm -hmm. Back then, you just you have a certain area and the neighborhood that kind of knew about the leagues and it was, it was word of mouth and they all played just because you knew somebody you know what i mean so it's just it's, it's just so much anyone can can pick up a ball and, and and have access to uh to to some great opportunities within the within the city yeah mm -hmm. i agree yeah